Pikmin teaches you how to let go. Moments like what I just showed are frequent throughout a normal playthrough, and it can be hard at first to accept that these cute little critters are going to die, and it will be your fault. Sometimes a lot will die. Sometimes it'll only be a few. But no matter the amount, their deaths are okay. You see, from the moment you and Olimar the astronaut crash land on an unknown planet, lost and alone, the Pikmin pledge you their loyalty. They ask that you command their every move, from something as simple as picking grass to whipping them through fire or straight into their predators. In return for your leading them, the Pikmin commit themselves to discovering Olimar's lost ship parts and bringing them back for repair. Much like interacting with a real-life pet, the game's opening hours have you observing a Pikmin's way of life, seeing what makes them tick, what they react to. Here, Pikmin live in their ships, which Olimar dubs the Onions. To grow, they bring resources such as pellets or enemy bodies back to their onion and bury themselves in the ground to gather nutrients before being plucked. However, Pikmin, named after their likeness to this universe's Pick Pick brand carrots, are nowhere near the top of the food chain here. Pikmin are constantly under threat from giant jumping frogs, colossal spiders, mile-long eagle heads, fire-breathing pigs, and even water. Even worse, nighttime becomes a Pikmin free-for-all. Beasts scour the darkness, seeking out stragglers who've failed to enter the Onion's safety. And that part's on you. You've only got 30 days to find and bring back all of your ship parts, or Olimar dies from a lack of oxygen. Days last 15 minutes on average, and when night comes, your Pikmin must either be at your base or under your command, lest they become prey when the sun goes down. But helpless Pikmin aren't. What they lack in size and strength, they make up with intelligence, using their heads not only to plan routes or harvest plants, but also quite literally, to bash their way through walls or beat down their adversaries. Pikmin are dangerous in numbers, swarming enemies in a terrifying showcase of bravery and courage, traits that Olimar needs if he's to get off this planet. Most of the gameplay involves aiming a cursor to individually throw your horde into combat or environmental scenarios. Things start out simple enough, asking you to land Pikmin on stationary targets to deal massive damage or have them build bridges over water. But as the game progresses, enemies become faster or more dangerous, and some can even fly, challenging your aim as you struggle to land that perfect throw to take them down, all while the environment becomes more hazardous, requiring you to learn each color's strengths and weaknesses. This balancing of different systems is a big draw for me. The game's difficulty comes from its real-time strategy roots and managing multiple sets of units at once, figuring out how to efficiently grab ship parts while protecting and growing your Pikmin horde, all while making sure you have enough time to pull any of your plans off. It's not long before you're harnessing multiple camera angles to line up Olimar's cursor, strategically throwing your followers in specific ways rather than haphazardly to minimize casualties. My favorite example of a skill-based toss is the most basic, that throwing Pikmin on top of a Bulborb flattens them. This becomes a sustained effort with the bigger Bulborbs, demanding that you spam throws, pause while the creature shakes your Pikmin off, then resume the swarm before it turns to eat everyone that fell. This is a great example of the game's scaling difficulty that I mentioned earlier. You'll learn the basics via standard enemies in low-stakes situations, then the game's challenge slowly ramps up over time. You can only have 100 Pikmin out at a time, including buried ones. So when, and I mean when, a Bulborb gets to snacking, you'll either have to grab new pellets to grow more Pikmin, or bring some out of their storage space in the Onion. Fortunately, an Onion can store as many Pikmin as you'd like, so feel free to hoard them up. These carrot creatures are instantly endearing, with their ready-to-go yells every time they're thrown to their fanfare upon grabbing an item, it's only a short time before you're dedicated to protecting every last one. You'll go to great lengths to keep red and yellow Pikmin from drowning in water, as only the blue ones have gills. 
You'll master the charge command to maneuver Pikmin around sleeping monstrosities, as maybe you don't have enough to put up a solid fight right now. You'll spend precious seconds ensuring every Pikmin spawning pellet is brought back to its rightful onion, as matching colors bring spawning bonuses. Or be selfish and have the reds hoard all the blue pellets, it's your loss. Pikmin need that micromanagement. While their optimism may suggest otherwise, these guys aren't perfect. Pikmin are constantly doing their own thing, and their autonomy leads to small issues like Pikmin carrying items away mid-fight, to genuinely life-threatening situations like when my red Pikmin decided to charge headfirst into water to activate this geyser. Like bro, I appreciate it, but think a little, you nearly gave me a heart attack. And don't get me wrong, a Pikmin's intentions are always good. They're only leaving your pack to help carry something back. But it's frustrating when you're rushing to grab a waterlogged ship part and a blue Pikmin leaves to grab a red pellet. It's super kind of him, sure, but you need that Pikmin for water breathing, not for its kindness. This forces you to stop and call your Pikmin back, only to redistribute them right afterwards, wasting precious seconds. But you can't stay mad at them for too long. You know they were just trying to help. If the Pikmin were perfect, they wouldn't be nearly as charming. These are curious creatures with a personality they're not afraid to show. And sure, it can be annoying when they simply refuse to listen, like seriously just leave the grass alone. But what's love without a bit of annoyance? It's like my dog. She never listens, but I would still do anything for her. Aya! Aya, can you come here? Aya, come? Aya, come here? Come here! With Pikmin around, there's always something to watch for, something to be doing. So much so that the game comes very close to being an anxious exercise. Time is the most important resource here, and any seconds spent unnecessarily reorganizing your crew are wasted ones. To succeed, you're always thinking ahead. Once my Pikmin put away the ship part, we should head up north. But is up north clear of enemies, or did I miss a few? Oh, and I remember there was a gate with water around it, so I need a fair amount of blue Pikmin, but not too much as I need yellow Pikmin to grab some bomb rocks. I also have hundreds of excess red Pikmin, so I should bring a lot for the boss fight since they're easier to replenish if a bunch of my Pikmin die. Wait, I just hit the 100 Pikmin on field limit already, how do I rebalance this? But despite all this constant thinking, your goals never feel unattainable. The game does a great job of making you feel capable, setting you up with basic controls to gather, throw, and direct your Pikmin, as well as an endless first day to get comfortable. And as someone who always needs to be multitasking and doing a million things at once, this is perfect for me. If you can lean into the chaos and really understand it, this game becomes something special. It also helps that your goal is relatively simple. As I mentioned, you're here to find all your ship parts in 30 days, whatever means necessary. Experiment. One shot a bulb orb not by precision aiming, but by simply rapid firing Pikmin. Learn that the reds are actually demons, immune to the fire spewing pigs in the game's third area. Feel the anxiety when you run out of time to pick your planet Pikmin, but enjoy the relief when you realize seedlings are safe overnight. The overall experience is immensely satisfying, like checking off an important task in your daily life. You know those days where you accomplish everything you set out to do? You slept well, finished your to-do list, and feel ready to do it all over again? The anxiety and anticipation of the next day is no longer there. You feel on top of the world, riding the high of everything you've accomplished. Pikmin provides that feeling consistently. But no matter how hard you try, you're always going to have an off day. It's important and even healthy to understand and accept that. In real life, an off day might mean eating poorly or underperforming. In Pikmin, an off day means dozens die at your command. A ship part is missed. A day wasted. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it hurts to know that you could have done better. But with practice, every day will get better. As you replay the game and get used to its quirks, you'll grab more parts per day or generate more Pikmin. You'll learn to trust and understand these creatures, so much so that you can leave them alone while you do other tasks. You'll anticipate them stopping to pluck grass, be ready to counter their desire to carry mid-fight, and practice patience even when they're stumbling along the way. 
you'll figure out new ways to take on familiar challenges, like when I realized in my second playthrough that I can just throw my Pikmin up this ledge and walk up, rather than needing the blue ones to come up with me through the water. A part that once took days to acquire can now be grabbed immediately. You'll get so good at micromanaging your Pikmin around the map that they'll start blocking each other from turning in valuable enemies and pellets when there's only 10 seconds left, and you'll wonder why the world chooses to punish the geniuses among us. And every once in a while, you'll fail and more will die. But as they die, you remember their willingness to sacrifice and you learn to let go. You can always get more Pikmin after all, and we've got a ship to repair. Part of what makes survival so satisfying is Pikmin's reluctance to reveal its more complex mechanics. One day you'll realize you left a seedling planted, only to return and see it's not a leaf head, but now a flower head. That flower Pikmin keeps up with Olimar much better than its leaf headed brethren, which means it can probably carry items faster as well. There's a bread bug creature that pulls pellets into its den fighting your Pikmin for control. You can damage it by throwing Pikmin on top, of course, but you'll quickly notice that two Pikmin overpower whatever it's trying to grab, dragging it and the item back to their onion. You'll watch and wonder, and the onion will absorb the seed, smashing the bread bug in the process and rewarding you with extra pellets. You can then absorb the bread bug for even more Pikmin. Find a yellow seed requiring 20 yellow Pikmin, but only have 15? No problem, just throw five blues in and they'll help. The carriers are majority yellow Pikmin, so they'll bring it back to the yellow onion. Mixing and matching totally works. As I mentioned, the game's charge mechanic allows you to direct hordes of Pikmin using a C-Stick. It's great for maneuvering your Pikmin around tougher areas and swarming more basic enemies, but once you get to some more complex enemies requiring you to throw Pikmin, you need to start thinking a little differently. But what you might not realize right away is that the C-Stick still applies. You can use it for faster throw spamming by keeping Pikmin close to Olimar, giving you more chances to hit a harder target as he's literally throwing the Pikmin faster because they're closer to him. It's a pro gamer move for sure, but with enough practice you can pluck the valuable pearls from a greedy clamshell much faster than otherwise. Just make sure to call your Pikmin back before they're crushed. Throwing them fast is not the same as recovering them fast. You'll see that all that grass grabbing actually has a point, extracting a yellow nectar substance that turns living leaf heads into flowers. You discovered this through gameplay. Sure, Olimar notes this down in his journal afterwards, but it's only after you've figured that out. It's the game's way of reinforcing that action to the player. It's not telling you everything straight up, but it is acknowledging and rewarding your efforts. And all of these realizations save you time. Time you can spend figuring out even more quirks and secrets. In fact, you don't even need all 30 ship parts to beat the game. You really only need 25, but you won't know which are required until you find them, as Olimar will mention it. However, this excitement and mystery goes both ways. Like when I tripped up this mushroom enemy and swarmed it with Pikmin. Here I was ready to celebrate its destruction when it released a gas that turned my Pikmin onto me. This made me scream, and moments like these highlight just how scary Pikmin can be. When you strip away the bright colors and pervasively cheerful personalities, what's left is the eerie nature of being trapped alone on a foreign planet. A place full of dark caves and monsters hell-bent on eating you. Underlying these feelings are some truly alien soundtracks, not unlike Returnals, another game where you're an astronaut crash landing alone on a foreign planet. A friend brought up a good point, that the music is often so alien that it's hard to tell what instruments are playing at times, really hitting this point home. And as the turned Pikmin swarm Olimar with the intent to kill, the one time they're not on his side, it ironically highlights just how important the Pikmin are to Olimar's survival, and that the world they live in is just not a nice one. It was at this point in my first playthrough, after barely escaping with Olimar's life barely intact, that I realized just how much I cared for these little guys when I felt that betrayal in my bones. It's not just the Pikmin I cared for, though. It's Olimar himself. 
While the desire to gather his ship parts and return home is a relatable one in its own right, Pikmin humanizes Olimar through his daily journals or his notes whenever we discover something new. We learn that Olimar has a family that drives his desire to go home. He has a mean boss, but a great sense of humor to cope with that. He's also a scientist, remember, and his genuine curiosity for life brings a positive spin on this otherwise tragic scenario, serving both the story and the gameplay. Olimar's notes are really fun to look back on, and he often adorns them with cute designs as well. His remarks also extend to finding ship parts. Nearly every part features some anecdote or witty writing, and you truly miss out if you skip them. My favorite is once again a simple one, what he writes about the extraordinary bolt. I bought this incredible bolt because the salesman told me it is of extraordinary quality that is indiscernible to the average person. Exactly what makes it so extraordinary is a secret, but just look at it. Extraordinary. It is extraordinary, Alamar. You can even find ship parts his children gifted, named after their astrological signs. Upon discovering them, Olimar shares a sweet memory of each child, and for a game that could have easily got by on its gameplay charms alone, much like a lot of Nintendo's other properties, the surrounding stories here only add to the experience. And once you've satisfied your story mode skills, like escaping in 13 days instead of 22, you can try out Challenge Mode. Challenge Mode features remixed maps and no ship parts. Instead, you're tasked with growing as many Pikmin as possible in one day. It's a different type of anxiety as you relearn layouts and seed placements, balancing Pikmin plucking with Pikmin carrying. Here, Pikmin deaths do matter, as misplaced throws lead to lower life counts and a worse overall score. It's a fun mode with an actual end goal, as each map has a maximum Pikmin count that you can work towards. It's also cool to see what these maps might have been earlier in the game's development, as areas differ a lot more than you might think. Challenge Mode is a sweet addition to a nearly perfect package, and I don't use that P word lightly. This game is Resident Evil levels of brilliance. It's small enough that each area feels meticulously thought through, charming enough that repeat playthroughs are a treat rather than a chore, and complex enough that you're discovering new things pretty much constantly. My issues are slight. Rapidly tapping A to pluck Pikmin is a tiring task. Calling back Bomb Rock Pikmin has them drop it, which can be frustrating in a pinch. Instead, you have to touch them to bring them back into your crew. You can pick up a radar that shows all of an area's ship parts on your map. It's an awesome way to have ship parts modify your gameplay experience, but no other part does this, and that kind of feels like a missed opportunity. Like, what if Olimar could modify a part that pollinated planted Pikmin so they grew into flowers faster, or something like that? I understand that the focus on Pikmin gameplay is the most important here, but little modifiers like this still would have been cool and would have presented even more ways to speed up your in-game completion time. And of course, sometimes you'll just have to restart a day due to situations not entirely in your control. Sometimes a Pikmin will just keep running into water. Other times you've wrongly predicted how an enemy encounter would play out. But as I said, Pikmin wouldn't be Pikmin without these little quirks. Pikmin's recent Switch port even addresses two of these complaints. Now you can hold A for Pikmin plucking, and you can even call back Bomb Rock Pikmin without them blowing their load. This is a game I certainly had nostalgia for, having grown up playing it, but one I'm really happy to say holds up today with no concessions. It's challenging, charming, thoughtful, witty, and just plain fun. For a series so strange, it's one I'm grateful to have experienced and happy exists. And I can't believe we've gotten a fourth Pikmin game in the year of our Lord 2023, and I'm hearing it's excellent as well. That continued legacy is something we should never take for granted, as a few of my other favorite franchises are surely being run into the ground. But that's a story for another day. Thank you for watching, and happy the end.